working as a hospice nurse this weekend and um, you know the, one of the gifts that I get to experience working with people at the end of their life and most of the people are, are older you know at the end of their life not everybody obviously but um, is to see them um, talk about you know I, I have always said in yoga class what would your 100 year old self tell your however old you are right now what would your 100 year old self tell yourself now and what advice would they give you and could you heed that advice you know it's hard for us to heed the advice of our elders even our own self elder um but it's it's a gift that i get to receive when i see um older people talking about the you know i'm so glad i did this in my life and i'm so wish i had done more of that and all these things right so there's a good reminder whenever i'm with older people about um the, the good the bad and the ugly of making um, good decisions in our life right or not such good decisions in our life so um Think about, you know, like I always hear the expression, the time to plant a tree was, you know, 20 years ago. The time to buy a house was 20 years ago. The time, everything's like in the past, if we really want to cultivate things like climate, climate change, goodness, and all these things. So we can think about this for ourselves too. We can't go back in time, but we can certainly start today with any health habits that we want to look at. So if your old person self has some advice, and not just physically, but maybe start physically, think about you know, what habits would you like to cultivate starting now um, that would really serve you till the end of your days? Um, and think about it in all ways. So physically, do you have something? Mentally, do you have a habit that you'd like to cultivate that would really serve you well um, as you age? emotionally spiritually you know what are the things that if you really could project yourself into the future do you wish you had um a little bit more cultivation with these things now so close your eyes for a moment and think about that you know think about um some of the things that you always say oh i need to do more of this or i need to do less of that or whatever and can you can you kind of distill it down to a bite-sized chunk of something that you can cultivate within your life right now. So let's close our eyes and um, imagine yourself as a very old person. Do you wanna be stooped over and not moving very much? Do you wanna have good posture? Do you wanna be able to um, walk? Do you wanna be able to live in your own home? Do you wanna be able to do all the things that you love, be with the people you love, be in nature? Um, you know, what, what is going to create that for as long as possible in you? So try to visualize who you want to be when you are a, um, an elder, you know, not just getting older, but an elder. Um, what do you want to look like? What do you want to feel like? What do you want to, um, who do you want to have in your life? What kind of interests are you going to be curious about? So let's just hold a little space to invite that elder of our own in and listen to the advice they have to give. Maybe it's just as simple as breathe deeper, okay, so that your lung capacity stays true. Settle in with that and, and come also into the body right now. So bring yourself into the groundedness of your pelvis. Bring yourself into the groundedness of your breath. Feel that posture, you know, we tend to slump um, so much. Let's feel the strength, that tensile strength that supports our upright nature. And when you find it, ease into it. What can you do to hold yourself open and long and free? without having to strain, can you be as efficient as possible in holding yourself up? Can you let your lungs help you stay upright? Can the buoyancy of your lungs support you? Can you feel your shoulders drop back a bit? Melt all the expressions in your face, the ways you tense, and strain, what can you surrender to? What 
one of the gifts that I see older people who are vibrant. Um, what I say, what I when I ask, what's your secret? Often, it's don't forget to have fun. Don't sweat the small stuff. You know, these are these are the things that we hear instead of the burden that carries us on our shoulders. So, what can you slough off? What can you lighten the load on your shoulders, on your heart, in your mind? Sometimes simple things like forgiveness, well, it's not simple, right? But things like forgiveness, letting go, contentment. All right, and then as you're ready, place the palms at your heart, lift your sternum. Let's bow in and offer an intention for yourself, for your class. And let's release the hands and come onto our back. Okay. All right, so um, let's find our way. Okay. Stretch your body. Okay. Lengthen through your limbs. Stretch your arms. Okay. And let's go ahead and feel a sense of reach. So stretching the left side, stretching the right side. Enjoy the way your body feels. So take care. Um, you know, the use it or lose it kind of mentality does not require going past your range of motion that's acceptable to your body. So as you fill in and move in all the different ways you can move, go ahead and bring your knees into the chest. Let's remember that uh, you know, going past our ranges of motion does not serve our 100-year-old self. It destabilizes joints. It, it weakens ligaments. So we want to have strong, sturdy cells that are supple and free. So remember to stay within your range of motion to do this. So let's go ahead and swivel around through your knees. You can circle a few times one direction, circle a few times another direction. We're going to get into the hips a little bit today, and when we do so, um, <clears throat> it's really important to not go past the rotational range of motion of your hip joints. You want to keep things as stable as possible. So let's start a little bit of that. Let's pull our knees away from the midline and back in, and as we start to rotate our femur bone, the heads of our femur bones in our hip joints, let's just pay attention. Where you know, where do you feel the end point of your joint versus where do you feel the end point of your muscles? So muscles can, you know, have a lot um, of range of motion gain in a short period of time just by warming up. So let's pay attention to the way we're feeling as we swing in and out. Are you starting to lubricate the joints just by this simple movement? All right, and then right knee into the chest, left leg long on the floor, roll around your ankles, wiggle through your toes, feel some movement, stretch through your spine. All right, and then let's change sides, left knee into the chest, right leg long on the floor, and do the same, wiggle around, roll, find your breath, extending crown to tail. Okay, and then bring your knees back in. Take a deep breath in, hug your chin up toward your knees, and then relax open. Stretch your arms and legs wide on the floor. And then exhale, and draw it in. A couple more times, inhaling, opening up to the starfish of your full expanse. Exhaling, curling into a little tight ball. And then put your feet down onto the ground. And we're going to take reverse pigeon pose very gently. So put your left foot on the floor, right foot is on your left knee. We're just for a moment going to keep our left foot on the floor. Stretch your arms overhead and see what that little gap underneath your back feels like. So find that little arch there. And then keep that arch as you bring your arms down to see what it feels like to anterior tilt the pelvis a little bit and then posterior tilt the pelvis a little bit. And just notice the change in your hip joint just from moving the hips, the pelvis around. And then, then go ahead and lift your foot off the floor now and come into reverse pigeon pose. 
So this is a big pose for this beginning of class. So feel free to rock a little bit. I'm rocking side to side. You can kind of circle or rock or sway, whatever feels good. All right, and then we're gonna drop our legs off to the left. And you might wanna block to stick underneath your right foot or underneath your left knee so you don't go too far. And just feel the rotation there in that hip joint. Extend your arm out, your right arm out. Take a deep breath and then pick your feet back up. Bring both legs straight up in the air and notice the difference between the way your right and left hip feel already. Open up your legs straight out so you're creating a letter V. Extend the spine. Your arms can go wherever is comfortable. If your arms are overhead, this is a lot of core work. So just be mindful. And then bring your legs back up, knees into your chest, right foot on the floor, left foot on top of your right knee. Pause here for a moment. Feel the stretch of your spine again. Reach your arms over your head. Find your breath and then bring your arms down and just, you can even put your hands on your hip bones and just feel a little anterior and posterior tilt to the pelvis. Just notice, this is subtle. It's just a subtle little shifting in the hip joint. Okay, normally we move the femur bone. Now we're moving the pelvis and keeping the femur bone stable. And now let's lift the femur bone. So bring your hands around the back of your right thigh or the front of your right shin. Perhaps you want one hand there and the other hand on your left knee. Feel free to move things around. You can swirl through a couple of circles. You can just rock side to side, whatever feels nice. You can be very still. And then as we're ready, we're going to drop our legs off to the right. You can put a block underneath there so that you don't go too far. Open the chest, turn your head to the left, shift your left arm out. And just notice the rotation in your left hip joint. Find your breath. I'm holding on to my left ankle to kind of stabilize me a little bit. And then bring your legs back up. Two legs straight up in the air again. Flex and point your toes. And one more time, we're gonna open up the legs out to the sides. Decide where you want your arms. Arms can stretch up overhead or they can be down. Find your breath. And then we're gonna bend your knees, come into happy baby pose. So just let the gentleness, these are some big poses for the beginning of class. So usually we do, do these toward the end. So just notice what it feels like to have um, this happening in the beginning of your practice. And then one more time, start fishing your body, open your body up, stretch and lengthen. And then exhale, knees to your chest and roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. Find your way into some cat cows. So we've already done a lot of warming with our hips, but now turn that into warming of the spine. See if you can feel the rounding and arching nature. Breathe deeply. And then feel free to swirl around any kind of movement. Move through your shoulders, move in your neck, move in your hips. It's whatever feels good. <clears throat> Sometimes the simpler movements are all you need for the body to feel really healthy and free. Okay, back into a neutral stance. We're going to sway our hips as far off to the right as you can get them. Just letting the outer hips stretch a little bit and then come back and sway the hips all the way to the left as far as they go. Come back to center. Let's come up, um, sit back on your heels. You can always come up onto your shins if your heels don't work. We're going to be on the wrist for just a little bit, so I just want you to warm up. Roll the wrists around. You can even, I might even stand for this, you can stretch your palms out and Knock one ear down and then the other ear down, finding that sense of um, invigoration through some nerve glides through your arms. Okay, feel free to roll your wrists around anyway. All right, and then let's come back down onto your hands and your knees. So always you can take fists onto the floor instead of hands if your wrists or whatever are not happy with this action. You can even take blocks and forearms on blocks. 
All right, let's start with your right leg. Stretch, stretch your right leg straight back behind you. Stabilize. Pulse a few times. So you're waking up your glutes, keeping them active. Your leg is straight behind you. Hips are square. Then we're going to do some big hip circles. So bring the knee around up toward the armpit and back. So big outer circles, bringing your knee out to the side, up toward the armpit, underneath your body, and straighten your leg. Notice if you have some snaps or cracks or pops. Does your range of motion feel good or not? Are you stabilizing with your leg on the ground? That should be a lot of work in that hip, that leg, your core. And then change directions. Now where it's kind of more, it feels to me a little bit like breaststroke does in the pool, just a little bit. And so bringing the knee out and then leg straightening, come back around underneath. Okay. All right. And then just knee to chest. Knee to chest. You can go fast or slow, however you want to go. And let's put that knee down onto the ground. Take a moment to open up your wrists. I sometimes feel the work of my stabilizing leg even more than the leg in the air. So just notice if where you feel the work of what we just did. Come back onto all fours or however you need to support. Feel the four points of your hands. So the, knuck the knuckle of your index finger and pinky finger and the two sides of your uh, lower palm near your wrist. Take that left leg straight back behind you. Pulse it a few times so that you're assured that your glutes are awake and alive. Feel your core, feel your psoas muscles, your deep transverse abdominis. Stabilize from those places. And then when you're ready, let's start to move. So feel the full range of motion in the hip joint. It's okay to have your hips slightly come offline from each other, but try not to lift the hip way high. You know, we're not trying to be um, you know, opening the hip to the side. We're just trying to get into the range of motion of the hip joint. Stabilize with your core. Stabilize with your leg on the ground. Make sure you're breathing. Okay. And then swing around the other way. Go into your breaststroke kick. Are you having any snap, crackle, pops? What's happening in your hip joint? Are you protecting, respecting, staying in your range of motion? Are you breathing? All right, and then come back, straight leg behind you, knee into your chest. And you can do this slow or fast or middle, however it feels good to your body. All right, and then stretch back towards child's pose. Take your arms, shake out your wrists if you want. As you come down, let your shoulders relax. Take a deep breath in. Let all that air go. All right, let's come up on tall fours. Let's find our twist. Reach the right arm up in the air. Exhale, slide that right arm down and through. Gaze toward the floor. Enjoy the quiet in your pelvis. Open up the space between your shoulder blades. Finding the breath. Inhale, lift that arm all the way back to the sky. Place the hand down onto the ground and change sides. Arm up. Exhale and slide that arm through. Gaze toward the floor. Hips, try not to let the hips push off to the side. Keep them over top the knees. Breathe into the ribs. Breathe into the back of the heart. Let the neck be soft. And then inhale and reach that arm all the way back up and place your hand down onto the ground. Back to child's pose. Walk the hands over to the right. Feel the openness through the left side of the body. Feel your neck relax. Drop weight into the pelvis. Feel the compression in the hip joints. And then come back to center. Inch over to the other side. Reaching to the left. Drop weight into the hips. Breathe deeply. And then come back to center. Come up on tall fours and find dog pose. Stretch out your body now. Feel your feet. Lengthen through your spine. Lift your sit bones. Widen your sit bones. Inner spiral your legs. Feel the bottom of your feet broaden and open. Feel the heart lift toward the pelvis. 
Hug your hands toward each other to stabilize your rib cage, your shoulder blades, your torso, your shoulders themselves. Take a little of the burden off by engaging some of the muscles in your torso. All right, let's walk your feet forward. Come into Uttanasana. Fold in half. Bend your knees as much as you want. Let your glutes start to open and stretch. Inhale for a halfway lift. The spine's going to get longer. Put your hands on blocks or hold your legs. Exhale and melt back down softly. Let your head relax. Relax your neck. One more time. Lift and widen your sit bones. The legs go straight without pushing the knees back. Extend the spine. Exhale and melt back down. Push off your feet. Rise upward, reaching the arms to the sky. Open the heart, maybe cactus open the chest. See what this feels like. And then exhale and round in. Pause here, palms to your heart. Feel the yielding. Give way into the earth, rebound. Find your breath. Maybe your 100 year old self says, unlock your knees. Or don't forget to relax your diaphragm. Or don't worry so much. You know, what is, what are, what is your 100 year old saying you, to you for your physical health? Interlace your fingers behind your back. Open the chest. Bend your knees and come forward. Relax your head. Head to the arm bones, lifting up and back. Then release your hands down to the floor. Halfway lift again. Exhale and melt. Let's step our left foot back, coming into a lunge with our right foot forward. So find your way there. Take your time. Come into a lunge. So let's warm up the way we always do through our legs. Feel the openness in the hip flexor of the back leg. Feel the openness of the hamstring of your front leg as you straighten that leg. And don't worry how far you go. Remember, we're staying within our range of motion. If you push past your range of motion, you destabilize yourself. So see what you can do to always color fully inside the lines, stretch the lines out maybe, but try not to cross past them. And this is just an intimate inner knowing of the sensations of your body to know when enough is enough and too much is too much. I, nobody can tell you that for yourself. Only you can sense it with your interoception and it changes daily. All right, so let's come into a lunge. Find the grace of the spine, soften it a bit in its length. And when you're ready, rise up. And maybe your back knee needs to bend a little bit. Maybe it needs to straighten a little bit more. Maybe you need to have your arms in a different place. So, you know, find the guidance of listening to the breath, listening to the way your body's feeling. Don't have expectations of what you should be doing or could be doing or want to be doing. Trust in the truth of what your body wants right now. Okay. We're going to find a gentle twist. So bring the elbow. Well, it's not so gentle. It's pretty deep. So if you want to back away, you can put your hand on your knee. I mean, on your block. Otherwise, put either your elbow or forearm on your knee. You can cross your hand to your opposite shoulder. Lengthen that back leg without pushing the knee up. Lift the thigh bone up. Extend the spine. Hug to the midline. Push your feet into the floor. And then unwind that, bring your hands back down onto the ground. Back foot comes forward, fold a little bit. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Let's step your other foot back. So left foot is forward, right foot is back, finding a lunge. And remember, you can always put your knee on the floor. If you're having a day where your energy's low or you're, you know, just needing more support, why not take it? Okay, so trust what you need. Square the hips. Try not to have a competition with yourself. Certainly don't have a competition with your younger self. Let's square the hips. Bow in. Find the breath. Breathing deeply as you move. Enjoy something. Try to befriend the sensations of the body. Enjoy them instead of um, pushing, always striving. See if your, your openness can come from as much relaxation as effort. All right, let's come into a lunge. Always can put the back knee down onto the ground. Lift up, put your arms where you want them, put your legs where you want them. Maybe a little less bend, maybe a little more bend. Maybe your back knee needs to bend to keep your neutral spine in your, in your back. 
So sometimes when we straighten that back leg, notice if you overarch your lumbar spine, sometimes a little bend in that knee can help you keep the ex expansiveness of your spine, that upright posture. Breathe deeply. And we're gonna come into a twist. So bring your forearm or elbow to the knee or your hand onto a block or the floor. Find your way into a twist. You can cross your hand to your shoulder, extend the spine, use your breath to do the twisting. Try not to sway, but hug in toward the midline with your inner thighs. Using your glutes in the back leg, stretch through your back foot. Push your front foot into the floor to activate your glutes on your front leg. And then unwind, bring your hands down onto the ground and step back to a plank. Just feel, notice if your body's warming up a little bit, stabilize through your core, deepen your breath. And then we're gonna come down to the ground, all the way to the floor. Back bend of your choice, maybe a teeny cobra feels good, maybe something else does. Exhale to come back down. Curl your toes under, lift your kneecaps up off the ground, widen your legs a little further, and then externally rotate your legs just a little bit so you're resting on the inner kneecap. Okay. Place your forehead on your hands for a moment. And just notice what the rotation in your hips feels like before we do anything. Is this comfortable for you? Is it uncomfortable for you? Do you have more ease turning one leg out than the other? Find your breath. We're going to lift the legs up. Feel all the muscles in your hips, your glutes working hard for you. Maybe you want to lift the head and chest too. Deep breaths. And then exhale and melt back down. Pick up your feet. Windshield wiper your knees left and right. And then we're going to come up on tall fours. Feel free to swivel things around, move in any way that is really nice for your body to move. Okay. Come up to dog pose. Deep breath in, long, patient, easy exhale. Let's lift the right leg up in the air, stack the right hip over the left, feel that stretch through the torso and then square the hips again. We're gonna bring our knee to the outer elbow. So into a plank you go, knee to the outer elbow. Inhale, bring that leg back. Exhale, knee to the outer elbow. Lift it as high as you can get it. Inhale, bring it on back. Now we get to plant our foot forward, come into a lunge. Bring your arm on the inside edge of your foot. You can always put your back knee onto the ground. Extend the spine, collarbones are broad. Hug your knee and your arm toward each other a bit. Feel the back leg lengthen. Stretch through the hip flexors. And then we're gonna turn to the long edge of our mat. Feet are pointing forward. Open up the inner thighs. Sit bones are widening. Bring your head to wherever it naturally goes. All right, now from here, we're gonna come up to stand. Find your breath. We're going to come deep, as deep as your leg will go. We're going to go into the right side, come down, bring your hands onto the floor or blocks, and stretch your inner thigh. Bring your toes up toward the sky. If this knee, your right knee, doesn't go into that deep reflection, just go where you go. Stick your butt out, sit bones wide, spine gets longer. And then we're going to come back around to the other side. Bring some openness into the, this inner thigh. Stretch your spine forward. Lengthen your heart, widen your collarbones. Try not to lock the knee into um, a droop toward the floor. You can almost feel like the back of the kneecap wants to pop up a little bit instead. And go and come back. Come to a very wide squat. So we're moving into toward the floor with our pelvis, but not very low, so our hips are in the same heights as our knees or higher. Take your forearms or hands to the inner knees and stretch your inner thighs. Now feel free to rock a little bit into your left foot, a little bit into your right foot. All right, come back up. Bring your hands back to the front of your mat. Step your feet back, so run to the short edge again. 
Inhale and lift the left leg up in the air and stack open the left hip over the right hip. Feel the breath travel through. And then when we're ready, square the hips again. Stretch that leg back. Exhale, knee to outer elbow. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, knee to outer elbow. Inhale, bring it on back. Exhale, plant your foot down onto the ground. Bring your knees onto the floor for a moment. Stretch back towards child's pose, finding some deep hip flexion. Bring your knees together for a moment. And let that feel. What does that feel like to have your knees closed? Put your arms wherever you want them. And then come back up a little bit and take your knees wide, like wider than you normally do, and stretch back toward um, a very wide child's pose. Okay. Notice the pelvis. So are you in a neutral pelvic turn? You don't want to round the back here. You want to have a slight anterior tilt to the pelvis, sit bones widening. And then come back up and find your way to dog pose. Lengthen through the spine, finding the breath. Right? And then we're going to walk our feet forward, come into Uttanasana. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Rise up, arms to the sky or wherever you want them to be. Exhale and release. Turn to the long edge of your mat and take your legs wide on the floor. All right, so I like to turn my toes out just a little bit for this. We're going to do Skandasana. So your Skandasana might just be here. We're going from one side to the other. So you might be pretty high with not much um, flexion in your hips because we're already rotating. So this is a big movement to have both abduction, rotation, and flexion happening in your hip joint simultaneously. So we're gonna come into as deep as you wanna go and then transfer the weight from one side to the other. Now, if your knees don't like weight bearing in the lunge, go higher until you feel like your knees can handle this kind of movement. So just go wherever your body goes and you can do whatever you want with your arms. I'm getting stuck by furniture. So you just find wherever you want to go. Enjoy the deep squatting. Okay, find your breath. Feel the yielding through your feet. Feel the four points of your feet. Find your breath. Wave into one foot and then wave into the other foot. And then wave into both feet. Come on up. Goddess pose. Put your arms anywhere you want them to be. Go as high or as low as you want to be. Spin your feet. Toes turn out, heels turn in. Lots of work in the hips. Engage through your glutes too. Push your feet into the floor. Find your breath. And then we'll go ahead and straighten your legs. Reach the arms, open up to a starfish. And then exhale and heel toe your feet in closer together. Stand in Tadasana, enjoy Tadasana for a moment. Feet are wherever you want them to be. Where do you land? Do you like to be hip width apart, a little more narrow or a little wider? Feel your yielding. So drop them to the earth with your feet. Let your diaphragm relax. Let your knees soften. Touch into the earth without collapsing. So what can you do to give yourself that downward energy? but also rebound with the upward energy so that neither feels forceful, neither wins. You know, you're not slumping, you're not propping. Just having that middle way where you feel energy moving in both directions. Find your breath. Drop weight into your right foot. We're gonna pick up our left, our left foot for tree pose. So you can always use support, okay? Hug into your right hip. See what it feels like to stabilize and not let the hip pop out to the side. Notice your right knee, softness in that knee. Yield through the foot, rebound up through your spine. Place your arms anywhere you want them to be. So what is your tree looking like today? Is it a super tall tree? Is it a wide tree? Is it just a tree trunk? Allow the knee to move out as your ribs turn straight toward the front of your mat. So you want your pelvis and your ribs and your shoulders to square to the front as you open up the knee. Lots of work in the small little muscles in your hip to cultivate this. Okay, 
And then let's go ahead and place that foot down onto the ground. Do whatever you want in between if you're a bouncer or a swayer or a tapper or anything that feels nice. Maybe you're totally still and that's what feels really good. Support yourself if you need it. Let's move to the second side. So standing on the left foot, bring the right foot. So remember, you can be anywhere along your leg. You can even still have your toes on the floor. So it doesn't matter, just try not to push weight into your knee joint, okay? So go where you go. Try not to have your hip sticking out to the side. Hug your hip in, feel the rebound through your spine as you yield your foot, soften the knee, bring your branches where you want them to be. Remember trees sway, they move, they bend. Breathe deeply. Try not to lock your breath. Try not to attach to anything. What can you surrender? Can you open up the knee? Can you turn the chest and torso toward the front of your mat? Finding the breath. Fix your gaze on something that doesn't move. Soften your eyes into your gaze. Now let's go ahead and unwind the leg. Place your foot down, rebound weight into both feet. However you like to be, if you need to move to create that, do that. And then find Tadasana one more time. Enjoy two feet on the ground. See what it feels like to open your posture up, to take your shoulder blades onto the back just a little bit more without tension. So try not to push your chest forward. Just neutralize into a spacious, open spine, a spacious, open chest, soft knees that can feel the earth through your feet. Inhale, reach your arms to the sky. Exhale, pour your breath out. Fold in half. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Let's step our left foot forward. Bring your left foot on the inner edge of your left arm. Stretch your spine here. Hug in, finding the breath. Deep inhale, deep exhale. All right, now from here, go ahead and come on up and turn to the long edge. Left foot is coming out first, okay? Find your way first into Parsvokanasana, so elbow on your knee. Before you lift your arm, just feel the spine grow. Can you feel that sense of not collapsing, but opening yourself up without locking the back knee? Have some softness in that back knee. Push into the earth and rebound through the spine. Take your arm wherever you want it to be. Open the chest. Integrate the ribs into the body as best as you can. Finding the deep inhale and the deep exhale. Dropping the shoulders, try not to collapse and hunch. All right, and go ahead and straighten your leg. Reach that arm up to the sky and find your way into warrior two. So open your chest, bring your arms where you want them to be. Feel the work of your hips. So with your front left foot, turn toes left, heel right. Nothing moves on the floor. If you need to come higher for your hip joint, come higher. If you need to go lower, go lower. See what this back leg feels like. Are you stable? Is your knee soft? How's your chest? Is your spine growing? Do you have good posture? And then straighten both your legs, arms up to the sky. Turn and let's come into Parasokanasana on this side. Elbow on your knee, stretch your heart open, adjust your feet to any place you need to be for comfort. When you're ready, slide that arm over your head. And perhaps your shoulders don't like that. And you'd rather have your hand on your hip or your arm resting on your side or your hand out to the side. Okay, so decide what's best for your body. The shoulders move away from the ears, integrate the rib cage, find the feet. Long, steady inhales, easeful, steady exhales. So when you find your way out, how do you get out of this? Do you push? Where do you push from? So feel the feet lift you back up. Reach the arm to the sky. Reverse your triangle pose and then come into warrior two. Arms can go anywhere you want them to be. Drop the shoulders. Feel the chest grow in expansion. 
Feel the spine, the spacious spine. Cultivate the big, broad rib cage. Feel the rootedness of your legs, of your feet. Deep, full breaths in and out. Feel your strength, your stamina, your endurance, your perseverance, your presence. All right, and then we're gonna come back up and turn your feet to the long edge again. So two feet are pointing straight. Take your hands on your hips and stretch your femur bones back as you lengthen your spine. Shin bones come forward a little bit so your knees are unlocked. Place your hands wherever you want them to be on the floor. Arms can come out, arms can come in. Deep breaths here. Okay, and then walk your feet in. One more standing pose to do before we make some changes. So turn to the left again. Interlace your hands behind your back. Open the chest. We're going to bend our knee and come into humble warrior. So the shoulder and the knee might find each other, maybe not. So your back toes can turn in more. Hug to the midline. Extend the spine. Find the breath. Push both feet evenly into the earth. Your arms can come away from the spine or be closer, as long as the heads of the arm bones are moving back and the ribs are integrating. All right, and then come on up, push off your feet, turn your feet the other way, interlace your hands the other way, open the chest, reach your arms away if that's where they go. I have to watch my head underneath my table. Extend the spine, arms can come away, arms can be close to the spine wherever you go, just lift the heads of the arm bones, integrate the ribs. Feel two feet evenly. Find your feet finding each other. Hug in, extend the spine, finding the breath. Now when you come out of the pose, push through your feet to rise back up. Turn your feet long edge, reach your arms, starfish your body, and then let's find our way back to dog pose. So spinning to the front edge of your mat and finding your way back. Extending the spine. Deep breath in and away. Come forward into a plank. Hold yourself steady here. Shoulders are away from the ears. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And then we're gonna put the feet on the floor or our knees on the floor and come down. Find an externally rotated back bend again. So curl your toes under, lift your kneecaps, turn them out a little bit. Legs can be wider than the hips. Everything can come up. Arms out wherever you want them to be, back out or up. Breathe. All right, and then place your head down on your hands. Bring your knees back to neutral and windshield wiper your knees left and right. Okay, so we're gonna just stretch our quads a little bit. So grab onto your left foot with your left hand. The right leg is on the ground. The tailbone is stabilizing. So you don't wanna squeeze your buttocks and tuck your tail, but you do wanna engage. So lift the pubic bone toward the navel. Stretch your tailbone toward the back edge of your mat. Your glutes will engage. Try not to hyper engage. And then stretch your knee. Pull your foot toward your sit bones as you stretch the knee. Head can rest on your hand. All right, and then go ahead and release that. If you have trouble re reaching your foot, you can grab your pants. If you don't have loose pants, then you can grab a strap and wrap it around your ankle so that you have something to hold. So try not to do this pose just like this, you know, where you're just kind of lifting the leg. That will just probably give your hamstring a cramp. So let's hold on to something. Tailbone reaches toward the back foot. Pubic bone reaches toward the belly button. Engage your glutes enough to stabilize your pelvis without squeezing onto your tailbone super tight. Stretch the knee. Enjoy the quad stretch. Open things up. All right, and then relax. We've been on our belly for a while. So let's come on up onto your knees, do some swirls, some sways, any kind of movement that feels good. Maybe some cat-cows, 
see what's feeling nice. Let's bring our left foot forward and our right foot back. Our knee stays on the ground. We're gonna find a hip flexor stretch here with a little twist. So bring your forearm or elbow onto your knee or your hand on the block, however you like to be in a twist. And we're coming to the, we're turning to the left. Left foot is forward. Find the midline with your inner thighs. Extend the spine upward, open the heart. Deep breaths. And then come back around, back onto all fours, any kind of movement you want. And then we're gonna bring your right foot forward, left knee is going to stay on the ground. Climb up, take a twist here. So we're opening up the hip flexors of this back leg. We're not leaning into the pelvis, we're finding the, mid the inner thighs hugging to the midline, find the front heel and the back knee find, uh, hugging toward each other. Use that energy to lift the spine and twist. The collarbones are broad, the chest is open. And then come back around again. Right, and bring your knees together. So this, this next pose is very um, difficult for a lot of people. So this is the one where I really want you to pay attention to your range of motion and not go past. We're gonna take our legs out for frog pose. If you need to have more support, you can fold the edges of your mat so that when you come onto the edges of your mat, you have some extra support. And the more you lean forward, the less intense on the hips. The more you go back, the more intense on the pelvis and the hip joints. So this is a lot of range of motion. You're abducting your legs, pulling them apart from the midline. You're rotating the legs and you're in deep flexion in the hips. So this is a lot of a lot going on. So only go where your body says to go. If you can't breathe, you need to back away. If you have pain in your knees, you need to back away. If you can't tolerate and find ease, you need to back away. Deep breaths here. All right, and then let's come out of there. So it's like a super wide child's pose. Undo that, take the bandaid off fast or slow. I like to bring my knees right together and curl into a snug up child's pose after that. So just see what feels good. Feel free to rock and move, anything that feels nice. All right, let's go ahead and come out of that. So let's slide down on our back for just a moment, just to stretch your body, your full body out, okay? Extending through your spine, deepening the breath, relaxing the groins for a minute, your hip flexors. You can take your feet a little bit wider and just um, rock, so pigeon toe, and then turn your toes out, and let your femur bones just uh, be soothed by some rocking. All right, rest here for a moment until you feel like things are back to normal from frog pose. Deep breath in and away. Now we're gonna have a choice of, we have three choices. Reverse pigeon pose, this one where you put your foot on your knee. Pigeon pose, or fire log pose, okay, where you're stacking. So you're very open. We've done the whole class to prepare for this depth. So if you want to try something like fire log, this is a good time to try it. I like to sit on the edge of my blanket. Okay, we're going to bring our right foot um, forward on top, whatever, first. Okay, find the breath. I guess I'll mirror that. So if you, whatever pose you're choosing to do, you want your sit bones widening the spine growing, the breath full. So if you're familiar with fire log and you're stacking your shins, make sure you're erasing your inner ankle wrinkles. No matter what pose you're doing, you should be stretching the big toe and the inner heel away from your knee. Extend the spine. If you are in uh, any pose, you wanna find the long, long spine. If you're in fire log, you can come forward, you can lean back to see what is best for your body. And 
find our way out of the posture and we're going to come to the second side. So you may have very different sides. You might have an injury on one side or the other that you are um, protecting and respecting. So if you need less range of motion, reverse pigeon pose is the most pliable as far as you know, gravity is not coming down on your knee or your hip joint. So choose reverse pigeon pose if you have an issue and then just go from there. If you wanna go deeper, pigeon pose. If you wanna go deeper still, fire log pose. All right, so if you're, you know, whatever you're doing, the sit bones are widening, the spine is growing, the chest is broad, shoulders are relaxed. Try to soften your face. Try to stay in the breath. Hips, you know, the way the hips feel can often tighten our breath up. What can you do to melt the diaphragm as you exhale? Stretch the big toe and the inner heel away from your knee, finding the breath. <clears throat> All right, and let's come out and lie on our back. Bring your knees to your chest and just rock left and right. Just soothe the hips. This is a lot of openness. We're going to take <clears throat> a moment. Just let things go. Put your feet on the ground. Neutral. Okay, neutral. Then we're going to take our feet wider and we're going to knock our right knee inward. Uh, you can come in, you know, fully twisting with both legs if you want, or you can keep the left leg more upright and just knock the right knee. And then come on up and knock the left knee. <clears throat> so just drawing the knee in internally. Breathe. All right, and then feet hip width apart and just windshield wiper. A little bit of movement. All right, stretch your legs straight for a moment. Just let everything go. <clears throat> Deep breaths in. Deep breaths away. And notice the work. You know, are you, um, do you feel tingly, alive? Do you have the feels in your hips somewhere from the work that we've done? Are you achy at all? All right, so the last few minutes, we're going to do leg up the wall pose. So you can choose whether your legs are going up a wall wall or up a couch wall. So <clears throat> if you want to have um, your legs, and the other thing, if you have a strap, you can strap your legs in so that you don't have to hold your legs. You don't have to do that, but it's just, it's just one more possibility that if you want to have a strap around your thighs, you can strap around your thighs to kind of let your legs be supported. So your legs can be up a wall straight like this, or you can choose to do what I'm doing and have your legs um, on, a, on a couch. If you happen to have your legs on a couch, you can even stick a block between your thighs and then the strap over that whole thing. So you're really supported in um, a, a nice neutral way, okay? So just experiment whether you want props or no, and let yourself melt into this. Okay, so you might feel a little shaky, you know, perhaps your hips are a little shaky from the work. What can you do to weight your legs? Let your femur bones drop into the pelvis. Of course, you can have a blanket underneath your hips if you want. So take the variation that feels best for you. If we were in the yoga studio, I would be um, putting sandbags on people's shins. If we had our feet up, legs up on a chair, I'd be putting sandbags on the tops of your, you know, the, the, you're on your pelvis, like low, low belly, top of the pelvis. So just imagine some weight across the pelvis, across the shins if your knees are bent. You can even put a sandbag on the tops of your feet if your legs are up a wall so that there's just weight traveling down into the pelvis.
deep breaths. Would your 100 year old self tell you to rest a little bit more, consciously rest a little bit more instead of mindlessly rest a little bit more? What part of your body do you not speak kindly to that your 100 year old self wishes that you had appreciated more? One of the joys about doing yoga in your own house is that you can choose to stay in a restorative pose for another half hour if you want, or however long you want. If you're ready to move into Shavasana, you can. This can be your Shavasana just like you are, but if you have the urge to lie flat, then you can do that whenever you're ready. Consciously melt your body down let it rest deeply rest let your arms rest your spine the back of your head what can you surrender to here can you feel your breath up easy and full both on the inhale and the exhale be aware of how the breath feels. If you're ready, let's begin to deepen our breathing. Enjoy the ease of your breath. Take a really big one, invite it in, let it go. And 
start to move a bit if your body is ready. You can wiggle the toes, stretch around, move around. Come on, your side when you're ready. Bring yourself up to sit. Take a moment to offer our practice. Let's offer it to our future selves, the ways that we keep just putting, you know, little deposit in the bank of our health. Let's offer it to all the people in our lives as well that we, by being healthy, support and care for. Namaste. Thanks everyone.